Hello, this is Todd Horton, and welcome to this video on plotting cross-section data. In this exercise, we're going to plot two roadway cross-sections at the scales that you see here. The two sections have stations 40 plus 50 and 40 plus 00. zero. So let's first look for the high and low elevations within each section. Okay, this appears to be the lowest elevation and that's the highest elevation in that cross section. Now let's go ahead and get the other one. Let's see. Um, it's looking like this one is the highest elevation and the lowest elevation is right there. Let's go, just go ahead and label those so we know what those are. So we've got the high and the low elevation. So let's think about this. Uh, the next whole number above both of those highest elevations would be 653. And the next whole number below the lowest would be 645. OK, so that's going to be the range of elevations we use for plotting our cross section. So on page three of your handout, you can see a center line there. And I'm just picking a line near the top and saying that's elevation 645. We're going to count up the appropriate number of feet and plot the center line elevation. So notice here that every square works out to be two feet high. So that point falls at the center line elevation, which in our case here is 652.3 feet. So now I've plotted that. We'll be labeling it in a little bit. But now I'm going to start working to the left. My horizontal scale is a 20 scale. So at 14 feet left, I'm going to plot an elevation that is 651.6. .6. So right there is 0.6 above 651. Remember, every one of these lines vertically, every pair of lines is two feet apart. So now I'm just going to keep moving to the left and I need to lay off a distance of 44 feet left. So you can see my pin is at the 45 line elevation wise right now. I'm 45, 44 feet left. And then now I need to count upward to get to 648. So there's 645 right there and going up three feet from that little dot. Uh, you can see there's 47 right above my pinpoint. So 48 will be halfway between. There we go. So that's where 648, the elevation occurs at 44 feet left. Now I'm going to keep going further out. My last offset to the left is at 58 feet left. And I need to be at 651.8. So 651 is the line just below the dot. 651.8. I estimate that. And now you can see I've got my three points to the left of the center line plotted. I'm just going to keep going here. And I'm going to go to the right now. Now I want you to notice that the elevation at 14 foot left is the same as the elevation at 14 foot right. So you can see I'm plotting those at the same elevation. My next offset is at 36 feet right and I'm looking for 645.2. So I'm just a little bit above the 645 line. Remember, vertically every square is two feet high. But horizontally, uh, we're using a one inch equals 20 foot scale. So now I'm at 43 feet right and I have plotted 647.5. Now I'm just going to go another five feet out, another five feet more outward and I'm at 48 feet right. You can see 48 lining up with my center line. And now I'm plotting 646.1 the best I can, estimating within the square. And now I'm going over to my final offset, 57 feet right. 
and it's just a fuzz above the previous one at 646.4. So now all I have to do is connect the dots. Okay, so there is our first cross section, and we like to label the elevation there. That's 652.3. That's the elevation at the center line of this roadway cross section. So that center line is going right down the middle of the roadway. And we'll label the station here so we know which cross section this is. Well, we're going to start the next cross section right here. It incidentally has the same elevation along the center line. So we can see we're plotting it very similarly to the first one. So that line right there is an elevation 645. Okay, so you can see that each cross section has to have its own vertical scale. We're starting that scale over and over for each cross-section. So once again we're going to work through this. We're going to do the left offsets first and do the right offset second. We need to calculate the pavement cross slope for these sections. Well, the edge of pavement occurs at 14 foot left and 14 feet right. So we could say that the pavement here is a total of 28 feet wide, or 14 plus 14. You'll notice that there is a steeper slope that begins at the edge of the pavement. We would typically call this area the shoulder. In some cases, the shoulder is just bare earth. Sometimes it is an aggregate or crushed stone surface on a two-lane highway like this. The low point that you see on either side of the pavement here is the ditch. And the slopes on either side of the ditch have specific names. The one between the edge of pavement and the bottom of the ditch we call the fore slope, or sometimes the front slope. And then the one beyond the ditch, when you're standing on the pavement, is called the back slope. Well, to calculate the slope here, all we need to do is know the horizontal distance and the vertical distance, or the run and the rise. Well, the, the rise here, or the vertical distance, is simply the difference in the elevations that, from which we plotted the cross section. So here you can see 652.3 minus 651.6 .6 is a difference of 0.7 feet. 
I like to express slope as vertical over horizontal. So here you can see our vertical distance is 0.7 feet. Our horizontal is 14 feet. So if you do the math, you'll see that the result is 0 0.05. Now that's a decimal expression of slope. A way to think of this is for every 0 0.05 feet of vertical change, there is one foot of horizontal change. Or for one foot of horizontal change, we have 0 0.05 feet of vertical change. I think you can simplify this a bit and see that that's five feet vertically for every 100 feet horizontally. Well, you can see that we can change that ratio to a percentage, and this indeed is a 5% slope. So that's how we calculate slope using cross-section data.